Grüezi YouTubers. Here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. If you are in all sorts of Arduino or Raspberry projects, you probably need DuPont wires for your connections. They are very handy, especially the prefabricated ones. In this video, I want to show you five tricks to ease working with them. First trick, length. You can buy them in three lengths, 10, 20 and 30 centimeters. I use all of them. If I have to connect a normal Arduino board with parts on my breadboard, I need longer wires. This is where the 20 or 30 centimeter wires come in. For connections on the breadboard itself, or if I have to connect pins on a module, the 10 cm wires are perfect. They are also good if I build a permanent project which I want to put into a box. 20 or 30 cm wires just would be too long. Trick number two, colors. This trick I learned the hard way. Because I did not care about colors, I blew up a module when I confused plus with minus. Since then, I use a color scheme. Black for ground and red for plus or VCC. Unfortunately, the prefabricated wires have 10 different colors and only one is black and one is red. These two colors were therefore always short. So I added a second rule. With priority two, I use now blue for ground and orange for plus. As long as there are no black or red in a connection, blue and orange are plus and minus. Now this problem is solved. All other colors can be used at my discretion. Trick number three, empty shells. Many connections consist of several pins in a row. Typical examples are I squared C or serial connectors. If you work with standard pre-configured wires, you have several time consuming problems. First, if you stick with a color rule, the order of the pin on the modules is always different as the sequence of the prefabricated wires. Two, you have always to check the colors on both sides of the connection if everything is hooked up the right way. And three, if not, you lose a lot of time to find out why this bloody thing doesn't work. I bought a set of empty shells to solve this problem. They are very cheap and usually sold for guys which want to crimp their own cables but you can use them also with prefabricated wires. Just remove the shells from your wires. Then these naked cables look exactly like home crimped cables. And now you can push them into the empty shells in the exact order needed. Handsome. And if you want to add a little finish, you can even label the connectors. If you do not need a particular connection anymore, you can reverse the process and use the shells and the cables for the next connection. Another goodie, this works well for female and male connectors. You need only one type of empty shells. Trick number four, splicing. Sometimes I need two pins connected to plus or to ground. Here, I cut two wires with the same color in half and solder them together. I use heat shrink tubes to protect the junction. The same method can be used if you have to connect parts with attached wires to your project. 
Examples are strain gauges for measuring weight. These strain gauges, by the way, are already prepared to be used in one of my later videos. Trick number five, super glue. Sometimes I have connectors with more than one row. Examples are the STM32 boards or the ESP01 module. I could buy empty shells with two rows to solve this problem. I solve it differently. I take two empty shells with the necessary length and glue them together. With this trick, I can fabricate my own two rows connectors just as fast as connectors with one row. The only exception is if you work with a raspberry. Here, I would buy some 20 times two empty shells. The goodie here is you do not have to fill the whole connector with wires. The system works fine with a very few inserted wires. These were my tricks for working with DuPont wires. In the next video, I will show some additional tricks with hot glue and heat shrink tubes. Just subscribe the channel and you get alerted when it's ready. I hope this episode was helpful for you. Bye.